السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to my channel Today's presentation is about introduction to the general anatomy course I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt The objectives of my presentation will be about First, we will take an overall idea about anatomy and why we study it then we will talk about the methods of studying human body and finally we will have a brief information about the organization of the human body let's start with some definitions first anatomy is the science that deals with the study of the structure of the body we study it because it provides a solid foundation upon which we will be able to build our medical education Another term we should know is the word dissection, which means cutting up of the body. The methods of studying the human body include dissection, living anatomy, embryology, histology, endoscopy, and radiology. For dissection, as we can see here in this dissected alpine red, the body is cut at different planes to allow the study of the body organs regarding their structure, shape, and relations to each other. Second, we have the living anatomy, where we study the side, size, shape of the organs, but in a living person, as in clinical examination. Next, we have embryology. By definition, it is the study of the development and fate of different organs during the intrauterine life. As we can see here how the fingers and the hand develop. First the fingers are connected by whips and then these whips will regress. By definition histology is the study of the structure of the tissue but using an aid like the light microscope. We can see here in this blood cell, these are the red blood cells and in the middle you can see a white blood cell. But if we want more details, we can use another aid like the electron microscope, either the transition or the scanning electron microscope to see more details of the cell. For the endoscopy, by means of which we can see or visualize the body but from inside using what is called endoscopes. And finally, we can use radiology to study the internal structures of the body using either X-ray, CT, or MRI, or any other different modalities. Here is the X-ray on the skull. It shows only the bones. Here, the MRI, we can see the details of the soft tissue like the brain, the brain stem, and cerebellum. Here, we can use a dye with the X-ray to see the inside of the stump. For the organization of the human body, on the chemical level, the simplest unit is the atoms. They collect together to form molecules, and the molecules collect to form the organelles. But the smallest living unit inside our body are called the cells. When similar cells group and work together, we have what's called tissue. When different tissues group together and perform a particular function, we call it an organ. When different organs group together and perform an overall function, we call it organ systems. And the total organism or the human body is made of different organ systems. You can see in this diagram the atoms, the molecules, which collect from cell organelles present inside a cell like a smooth muscle cell here. The smooth muscle cells, when they group together, they will form smooth muscle tissue. The smooth muscle tissues, together with the connective tissue, neural tissue, and other kind of tissue, collect it together and form an organ, like the stomach here, which perform a particular function, like reservoir and digestion of the food. And then when different organs like the stomach, the pancreas, the liver, the intestine group together, they form a system like the digestive system, which lies inside the human body. Inside our body, there are cavities. 
As we can see in this diagram, in this side view, we have two main cavities. One near the back, we call it the dorsal body cavity, and one in the front, we call it the ventral body cavity. The dorsal body cavity is further subdivided into two. Above, we have the cranial cavity, which lies inside the skull and contains the brain and its surrounding membranes. While below it lies the vertebral cavity, which lies within the vertebral column and contains the spinal cord and its surrounding membranes. Near the front of the body, we have the ventral cavity, which is further subdivided into thoracic cavity within the thorax and abdominal pelvic cavity inside the abdomen and pelvis. These are separated from each other by the diaphragm. The thoracic cavity is further subdivided into pericardial cavity in the middle of the thorax which contains the heart and its surrounding membrane and the two pleural cavities on each side each contains the lung and the surrounding membrane. Below the diaphragm lies the abdominal pelvic cavity and they are not separated from each other. For the medical terminology these are words that name either a structure or a process that takes place inside the body. Big words can be broken down into smaller parts and if you know the meaning of the individual parts of this medical term, you can figure out the meaning of the entire word. For example, we have the nose here, but in Latin it's called rin. If you add the suffix Cirrus, we will end up with the rhinoceros. And if you split these words uh, into its components, ren means nose, cirrus means horn, and the O is the connecting vowel. So we have rhinoceros. Another example, if we add the suffix etis to the end of the ren, we end up with a medical term called rhinitis or inflammation of the nose. If you add the suffix plasty, we will end up with what is called rhinoplasty or surgical repair of the nose, and so on. Structures inside the body are named either according to their shape, like the deltoid muscle, according to the size, like foramen magnum here, which is the largest foramen at the base of the skull. Or we can name a structure according to their color, like the erythrocytes or the red blood cells. Or we can name structures according to their function, like the rotator's muscles, which rotate the spine. Also, structures can be named according to their location in the body. As in this example, we have the biceps brachii muscle. Brachium here means arm. So, by adding the location, we know now that this muscle lies within the arm. Finally, we can name the structure or the process or a disease after someone's name, as in Alzheimer's disease, for example. The anatomical position is an imaginary position the anatomists agree on. So when we describe the human body, we imagine it's as if it is standing in the anatomical position. In this position, the body stands erect, with heels together and slightly apart. The upper limbs lie along the sides of the body. The palms of the hands are facing forward and the thumb lies on the lateral side. The head and eyes are facing forward. Then we have what's called the planes of the body. Again, these are imaginary planes that we imagine that it cuts the body at different directions. We have the median sagittal plane, the paramedian, the horizontal, and the coronal planes. The median sagittal plane is an anteroposterior plane that passes through the midline of the body exactly. Thus, it divides the body into two equal halves, right and left. The paramedian plane is another anteroposterior plane that lies parallel to the median plane and cuts the body into unequal right and left parts. The horizontal plane, it divides the body into upper and lower parts. 
while the coronal plane divides the body into anterior and posterior parts. Let's take a quiz now and tell me which plane this doll is caught at. Yes, the median sagittal plane. As we can see that this doll is cut into two equal right and left halves. What about this doll? At which plane this doll is cut at? Yes, at a coronal plane because the doll now is cut at anterior and posterior parts. So this doll is cut at a coronal plane. Next, we need to know what is called anatomical directions. So, if you want to describe, for example, the position of the heart in the body, you need to know what lies in front of it, what lies behind it, what lies above it, and what lies below it. So, you need to know what is called the anatomical directions. So, in this side view, we can see that we have two opposite directions, anterior and posterior. So, anterior or ventral refers to a point near to the front of the body, while posterior or dorsal refers to a point near the back of the body. So we can, um, for example, we can say that the heart lies in front or anterior to the vertebral column, or we can say that the vertebral column lies at the most posterior or dorsal aspect of the body. Next we have superior and opposite to it is inferior. So superior means above and inferior means below. So any point near the head of the body we call it superior and any point near the feet or the lower part of the body we call it inferior. For example you can describe the position of the nose lies superior to the mouth and in the same time the nose lies inferior to the eyes. Next we have medial and opposite to it is lateral. Medial means any point towards the midline of the body, while lateral means any point li that lies away from the midline of the body. For example, if you want to describe the position of the fingers in relation to each other, so the thumb or the big finger is on the lateral side while the little finger is on the medial side. What about the middle finger? The middle finger lies medial to the thumb but in the same time lateral to the little finger and so on. Also we have superficial and opposite to it is the word deep. Superficial means closer to the surface of the body or closer to the skin. So the skin is the most superficial layer covering the body. While deep means towards the center of the body. So we have the skeleton lies deep to the skin and the, the heart lies deep to the skeleton. So think of it like the layers of making the onion. So you have many layers, one superficial to the other. We also have proximal. And opposite to it is the word distal. Proximal and distal usually refers to the limbs. So proximal means towards the shoulder or the hip joint. The point where the limbs uh, are attached to the core or to the trunk. So we have the upper limbs attached to the core through the shoulder. And the lower limbs attached to the core or to the trunk by the hip joint. So any point refers or close to the shoulder or the hip joint, we call it proximal, while any point away from the shoulder or from the hip joint, we call it distal. So you have the elbow joint is proximal to the wrist joint, while in the same time, the elbow joint is distal to the shoulder joint, and so on. Let's take another quiz. Now let's look at number one. The arrow that points to number one refers to which direction in the body? Correct, superior. What about the arrow number two now? 
posterior or dorsal, right. What about number three? Anterior or ventral. What about the arrow number four? Inferior or caudal. What about number five? Proximal. And number six? Distal. Nice. If a point is close to the skin, we call it superficial. Any point close to the core of the body or the center of the body, we call it deep. This will be the end of my presentation. I hope you like it and you find it easy to understand. Also, I would like you to listen to it first and read the handout before you show up in the tutor availability and discuss whatever points you find it difficult for you.